Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my object-oriented design tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn the UML design that we created in part one, and if you haven't watched that, definitely watch it. It's up above, and I'm going to turn that UML design or specification directly into working Java code. So let's get into it. Okay, on your screen, you're going to see the Java code from the last part of the tutorial, and here is the use case diagram that we had previously. And our goal here is a player is going to be created at random that offers the prediction of a coin flip, either heads or tails, and then the other player gets the other option. The coin is flipped, and the correct guess wins. That is our goal, and that was the use case. Then we created the object model that you see right here, and all of this diagrams and all this stuff is a Available in a link under the video you should put it in front of you to completely understand this stuff and we created this object model which is going to tell me how many instances of all the different classes I'm going to need as well as attributes and a whole bunch of other things and then from that we created our class diagram so now I know exactly what attributes or fields and methods I'm going to need for all of my different classes and then the sequence diagram which is right here which is what I'm going to be working with a lot is going to show me all the logic and how all of these guys are going to work together. So let's get into the code and start working with this stuff. So I'm going to have the class diagram down here in the lower left hand corner. Like I said, you can get this whole thing, put it in front of you, look at it, and then you'll completely understand this stuff. But because of the lack of screen real estate, I'm going to have to move this over here. So I'm going to be looking down here and transferring what's down here over to this. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is create player.java. I haven't really thought at all about any of this stuff, so I'm going to be creating all of this right out of my head. Actually, I think coin.java I'm going to create first. So I'm basically just going to take this class diagram that you see down here for coin and transfer that over to this. So I'm just going to go public class coin. Not much thinking and that is the whole goal here. Get all your thinking done in the diagramming part of the tutorial. So I'm going to go private string coin option because it says to do that down here and so I'm just following my specification and then I also know from creating the sequence diagram that I'm going to also have to monitor the coin value or I'm going to have to have an array. I'm just going to do this as an array. Like I said, I haven't thought this out a lot because I wanted to make this feel like what happens whenever somebody's just handed a specification and they just start writing some code. So this probably could be done better with an enumeration or something like that. But either way, for now, this is what I'm going to do. And I also know from my sequence diagram that I actually create coin right here see create so I have to provide a constructor that's going to allow me to create that coin and for now I'm just gonna leave it right like that I'm not gonna do anything else and then also from looking down here at the coin class diagram get coin option and it's gonna return a string so I'm just gonna go and create that guy so public string get coin option and what's it gonna do it's going to return coin option which is going to be a string so there you are all I'm doing is taking what I got on the left side of the screen and moving it over to the right side of the screen. Well now, I'm going to go into player.java, and all this code's available under the video as well. And I'm going to go public, class, player, and then what do I know by knowing what I know about the player? Well, I'm going to have to have a name, which is going to be a string, and I'm going to have to have coin option, which is going to be heads or tails for each of the players. And then I'm going to have to have get coin option, maybe. Haven't quite decided if I'm going to need that or not. Set coin option, which is going to pass whatever the opponent flips over to this player and then it's going to automatically switch so if it gets past the heads it's going to switch to tails and it's not going to return anything because it's going to set coin option up here so that's what this is telling me that's what this diagram is telling me get random coin option this is going to be used in the situation in which this player is going to be able to pick heads or tails and this is going to return string which is going to be heads or tails and then did player win it's going to be past the winning flip. The winning flip is going to be compared to coin option, and then we're going to be able to decide if the player won or lost. So let's just go in here and again transfer what's on the left side of the screen over to the right side of the screen. And I'm just going to give this a default of nothing and private string 
coin option, which is going to hold whatever the option is for each of the players that's going to be created. Again, just copy in from the left to the right. And then I'm also going to store this guy in here. Like I said, this isn't optimized because I'm doing this out of my head. So, you know, bear with me. I'm betting there's a better way to do this than that. Like I said, enumeration or something like that. So then we're going to go player string. Let's say that a name is going to be passed over to this guy because we have to store the name somehow. And then we're just going to go name is equal to new name, which is passed to it. So there's the constructor out of the way. And then we're going to have public. This guy is going to return a string get coin option. Again, my sequence diagram actually told me that I don't need get coin option. And I'm kind of guessing that I might not. But just out of habit, I'm going to provide that option just in case I do need it because it's always nice to have it there unless I do need it. Then I'm just going to go public again, void set coin option. And this is going to be passed a string, which is going to be whatever the opponent flipped. And I'm also sort of looking at the sequence diagram as I'm putting this together just for now. But as I go and progress through this, I'm going to look more at the sequence diagram after I have everything all set up. So I got set coin option, which is again, just taken from the class diagram. Then I'm going to go public string get random coin option and throw that inside of there as well because that's in the sequence diagram. So I'm not really fleshing out these methods at this point in time. I want to make sure that I have them all in here. And actually, if I used a really professional tool for UML diagrams, this stuff would actually get spit out for me. So that would be really cool. But either way, I want to work with what I got. And then the final thing I need to create here is public void did player win. And the ultimate goal here is to provide a software engineering type degree online for free. That's what I'm trying to do. It's never been done as far as I know, but I like doing things like that. Okay, so now I transferred the class diagram over to this guy, and this has a little arrow underneath of it or a little red line because it doesn't have a return value, which we'll worry about that later on. So now that we have that all set up, let's look at coin game, which is this guy down here. See, coin game, and I'm going to create this class, and it's going to have a player's array, a coin that's going to be stored inside of it using composition, and start game, which is going to be a method. So let's just go into coin game.java and create it. So we're just going to go public class coin game, and then just copy what I got on the left side of the screen. So it's a specification, then this is the sort of stuff that programmers do all the time. The architect goes and creates what we created in part one, and then the grunt programmer, who or whatever you want to call them, is going to create the actual code. So pretty simple stuff. And we're just going to call coin constructor for this guy. And coin game is going to be the constructor for this. And it's going to be passed player one name because we want to assign names to these guys. And player two name because we know we need to assign those values. And for now, let's just leave it that way. Okay. And then the final part of this is going to be public void start game. And let's just leave it that way. So there we go. We just transferred all of these class diagrams over here on the left side of the screen over to our code. That's all we did. So now we can move the sequence diagram over here because the sequence diagram is going to help us write our code. It's going to tell us exactly what we need. So now let's jump over into coin.java and start writing all of this code. So what is coin going to have to do as a constructor? Well, let's look and see what exactly coin does as a sequence diagram. So coin is going to be created. And then what happens? Coin game. That's what this guy is here. That's what this line is right here. Coin game is going to call coin with a method get coin option. And it's going to be returned with a string, which is going to be the winning flip. That's it. That's all coin does. So let's go and get this simple thing out of the way real quick here. And I'm going to decide to just do this inside of here, inside of the constructor, just to keep everything as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to generate a random number, uh, either a zero or a one. And the value of coin option is going to be set based off of that random index, which is going to come from this array right here. Like I said, I know there's some better way of doing this. But I like to jump in, make the code work, and then worry about optimizing it later on. So I know I need a random number. So I'm going to call math.random. And I'm just going to do this really simply. I'm going to say if the random number comes out less than one half 
I'm going to give it a value of zero. And if it comes out greater than one half, I'm going to give it a value of one. So that's going to help me be able to figure out exactly whether I want heads or tails chosen here. And then what I want to do? Well, pretty simple. I'm just going to go coin option is going to be equal to coin value. And then I'm going to stick the random number inside of it. So that's going to be the index value. See, either zero or one. And this is the zero index. And this is the one index. So there we are. Pretty simply, I'm able to create that. And guess what? I think that's all I need to do. So because why? Because the sequence diagram told me that. It basically says all I need to do is whenever get coin option is called, I need to return a string, which is going to be winning flip. And then the coin pretty much just dies, which is exactly what it did. I created a new coin and it's going to return coin option when get coin option is called. So I'm basically just copying exactly what's there. All right, so coin's done. We got that finished. Now we have to go into player.java and make that code work. using our sequence diagram again. So what do we need to do here? Well, let's take a look at our sequence diagram and figure it out. Well, get random coin options going to be called for our player. See, this method actually is for this guy right here, and it's going to shoot back player's pick. That's all it's going to do. So let's go in here and make sure that we have this all set up properly. We already have the name assigned to our player, so that's cool. It looks like my sequence diagram was smarter than me. I'm not going to use get coin option. I'm going to leave it in there though just for the heck of it. But let's just go along with the sequence diagram. I know set coin options here, but I'm going to come in here first and let's write all this code. So what am I going to do? Just to keep this simple, I'm just going to use this guy right here. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to copy that, which is going to give me my random zero or one and paste that in there because I need to return either heads or tails in this situation. So I'm going to do it in much the same way. So then I'm going to go coin option is going to be equal to coin value and then pass my random number inside of there just to keep this really simple because I know this is going to work. So I'm just going to reuse this code. So now that I have coin option set for this object, see I'm setting it inside of here, which I'm going to use later on. I'm now going to return my value. So I'm going to just go return and this is going to be exactly the same thing. So let's copy that, paste that in here. And there we are, the red line went away and everybody's all happy. So now what do we need to do? Well, set coin options going to be the next guy that we need to do. And I can see that. So in the situation in which the player doesn't win, what I want to do is I want to actually pass over. So let's say the player one wins the random number generating pick thing and they say, okay, player one, what do you want? It says heads. Well then set coin option is going to pass over heads to player two and player two is going to choose the opposite of heads, which is going to be tails. So I basically just have to program that in there. So how am I going to do it? Let's see if I can just do it in one line of code. So I got coin option, which is opponent flip. That's being sent over to me and I'm just going to come in here and go opponent flip if it's equal to heads in that situation I'm going to change this value to tails and if it's equal to tails or anything else I'm just going to set the coin option to heads pretty simple one line of code all done so that's it that's just the sequence diagram told me to do that. And then what does the sequence diagram tell me to do? Did player win? Well, I know this method doesn't have anything in it and it needs to have something in it. So let's go over here and figure out exactly what it's going to need to do. Scroll down. Did player win? Well, the coin is going to flip and give me a winning flip. I got that from the coin object. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, I need to pass the winning flip over to player one. And then player one is going to need to output whether it won or not. So how are we going to do that? Well, just out of my head, I'm going to just go coin option and spell it right. So coin option, coin option is whatever the player has as its value. If it's equal to winning flip, which is the flip that the coin did, now I'm going to print out a message because remember previously I said that I just want these guys to print out a message right here on the screen rather than pass stuff back. So I'm going to say name, which is my player's name, one with a flip of, and then come over here, and coin option, which coin option is going to be this player's value. So it won. Else, if it didn't have the winning flip, I'm just going to change this to lost with a flip of coin option. And there you go. The sequence diagram told me everything that I need and I know it's perfect. And the class diagram told me what attributes or fields I'm going to need as well as what methods I'm going to need. So now I need to go and figure out exactly what coin game needs to do. 
Now, coin game is going to be a little bit more complicated. See, coin game .java, and let's just look and see what's going on. So remember I said previously that I wanted flip again, the option to play the game again, to actually be in the main part of the program. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. So what I need to do is figure out a random player who's going to get to either choose heads or tails. And then I know all this stuff. Get random coin option needs to be called on this guy. It's going to return back whether it chose heads or tails. If it chose heads, for example, I'm going to set the other player to the opposite of whatever heads is, which is going to be tails. And that's what the sequence diagram tells me there. And then in a situation which player two wins the random pick, it's going to do the absolute opposite. So let's go into coin game and let's start figuring out exactly what we're going to do. Well, the very first thing we're going to need to do is I have my players array and what it's going to do is store names. So I'm going to go new player, player one name is going to be passed over and I'm going to create a new player object by passing it the name. And let's take a look at that for a second. So here we are in player.java and you can see here new name is passed over and we're going to assign that to this field up here. So that's all we're going to do there. So pretty cool. All right. So what else do we need to do with the coin? Well, we're going to jump right into the whole entire process of starting the game. So what do we need to do? We need to pick a player at random. Well, I used this code over here before, so I'm just going to use it again. This is just going to pick me a random zero or one to decide which player gets to pick first. Then I'm going to create a string, which is going to be players pick. And as you can see over here, all this stuff's coming from the sequence diagram. Look, the name of this, the return value is player's pick. So I'm just using the sequence diagram. I'm following the rules that are laid out to me by the architect of this plan. And then I'm going to go random index. And then I'm going to say get random coin option because the sequence diagram told me to call that method. And it said that it's going to return back to me either heads or tails. And actually, I'm going to change this to index that works better and then make this capital there you go so there we are we picked a random player pretty simple and we also return back a value of heads or tails from that player well then i need to set the opponent's coin option to the opposite value so this is if player one one we are going to set player two's value to the absolute opposite value so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go random index is equal to zero. Again, this is an optimized code. Feel free to optimize it. I'm just doing this, like I said, <laughs> and you can't like, keep repeating that, but I, I just know that I'm not optimizing this and it's making me nervous. So. so opponents index, and then in this situation, I'm going to call set coin option. Why am I doing that? Players pick because the sequence diagram told me to see set coin option. It's going to be passed over a string and that string is going to be the opposite of whatever the other guy's pick was. So look at this, how everything just comes together. I'm barely even thinking. And I know code is working when I'm not thinking too much. And then what do I need to do? Well, I need to flip my coin. I already created my coin. So I'm going to go winning flip is going to be equal to the coin. And if I forget what exactly I need to do there, I can just look at my sequence diagram. Get coin option is what I'm going to be calling on coin. So I just go the coin, get coin option. And there we are. So now I know what the winning flip is. And now I need to actually print out the results. So I'm going to go players, call my first player, did player win. And I'm going to pass over the winning flip to it. And it's going to tell me if player were one, one. And then I'm going to do the exactly the same thing for player two. And as far as the sequence diagram says, I am finished. So I'm going to save coin game. Now I'm going to actually create the main working program, which I'm going to call coin flipping game .java. So I need to get input from my user. So I'm going to go and need the scanner library and I'm going to go public class coin flipping game. Kind of a funny name. So what do I need to do here? Not much because basically all this guy's going to do because my sequence diagram tells me this is all it needs to do is give the player the option to play one time and then play again. So what does that tell you? Whenever you're thinking about something, you're definitely going to do at least one time and maybe more times than once. Well, that pretty much screams to you that you're going to use a do while loop. But either way, so I'm going to go coin game because I need coin game because coin game runs absolutely everything. And I'm going to go new coin game. And then what do I need to do with coin game? Well, let's look at coin game. Coin game .java. Well, I need to pass over a name for player one and player two. All right, piece of cake. So I'm just going to make up some names here, Mark and Tom. And there we go. 
So that's all set up. And now what do I need to do? I basically need to start the game. Well, I need to say inside of main, don't want to jump out of there yet. And I'm going to say string users answer is actually going to be whether the user chooses to do something again or not. Remember, I said I want to do something at least one time. So do while. That's what that means. And then inside of it, I'm going to say the coin game start game and there we go and then after the game is run i'm going to go out print line and i know again from my sequence diagram that my sequence diagram says you know what your only job is to ask the player if they want to play again and if they want to play again you give them the option to do it so i'm going to go scanner play game again is equal to new scanner system in because that's going to read input from my keyboard and then i'm going to go users answer is equal to play game again next line is used whenever you're reading text from the user and then that's basically it i just need to come down here and finish my while loop to decide if i'm going to do it again so i'm going to go while i'm going to check a couple different things here this is the first thing that comes to mind for me to do i'm going to say starts if their answer starts with a lowercase y or user's answer starts with an uppercase y. If that happens, I'm going to do it again. And if not, I'm not. Okay, so let's save it and let's see if this actually works. It should because the sequence diagram's there. I didn't see any error messages pop up. But either way, let's run coin flipping game. And you can see it worked. Mark lost with a flip of heads. Tom won with a flip of tails. So let's try it again. Let's just go Y. Mark lost with a flip of heads. Tom won with a flip of tails. Let's try it again. Uppercase Y. Mark lost with a flip of heads. Tom won with a flip of tails. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. So there you go. There is a prime perfect example of how to create all of those UML diagrams just from a really simple specification and then convert the whole entire thing into code. Leave any questions or comments comments below. Otherwise, till next time.